So um, welcome everyone. I'll state again that my name is Nathan Selnitsky and I'm a backend infrastructure developer at Wix.com. And this talk is about Greyhound, a high level um, event-driven functional SDK for the Apache Kafka. And it is used by almost all of the 1500 microservices on the Wix production environment. And I'm part of the data streams team at Wix, where we recently rewrote Zio, uh, sorry, Greyhound from scratch, and we uh, implemented it with functional design paradigm and the Zio library. So we decided to open source Greyhound from day one for the rewrite, and we offer a lot of cool features that I will share with you in a bit. First, I want to talk a little bit about uh, how Kafka works so that we all be aligned. So Kafka is a message broker and we have a producer of messages and a consumer messages that use Kafka broker as an intermediary for resiliency, etc. So when the message is produced, it's actually produced to a specific topic and the topic is divided into partitions. And the message while being produced actually gets written to uh, append only log file. And it's very fast performance uh, with this uh, design. And you can keep messages basically indefinitely uh, in the log file. Although the default uh, retention time is one week. And over on the consumer side, uh, unlike traditional message queues, you don't actually, once processing a message, remove it from the queue. You just uh, sequentially process a partition and commit a message once you're done uh, handling it. And uh, it's still kept in the partition for other consumers to consume, for instance, each one in its own pace. Okay, so Greyhound actually wraps the Kafka producer and Kafka consumer SDKs. And the idea here is to simplify the SDK APIs, remove boilerplate, add additional needed features for Wix uh, services. That's where it started from. It, it's like an abstraction layer that makes it really easy to change stuff behind the scenes for all our microservices. So we can fix bugs, introduce features, and have them almost immediately in production uh, for any service that will get redeployed. Now, for our open source, we wanted to have as much access as possible. So we have support multiple APIs. Of course, because uh, it, the logic is written in Zio, we have a Zio API, but we also offer a Scala Future API and a Java API as well. Now at Wix, we also have a Wix interop layer that basically has all the defaults that uh, are required for how Wix services use Kafka so that the services won't need to re-implement that again and again. And uh, we offer, of course, Zio for Wix, but mostly Scala Future as almost all of the JVM microservices are written in Scala with synchronous or asynchronous uh, features. And uh, we, we also, uh, so, so that's why uh, we also use the Scala feature API for, uh, for Wix. And, uh, but we also have the, the, the open source flavors that I mentioned as well. So let's start with removing boilerplate and having better time with Kafka. Let's look at the Kafka SDK, Kafka consumer. So it requires to specify uh, the key type and the value type of each record that's going to be consumed. And when you create the consumer, you need to specify broker locations and also the deserializer that will be used in order to actually be able to deserialize the key and the value. So that's already quite a lot of boilerplate. And here we chose to recursively, uh, have a recursive method to actually pull messages recursively from, from Kafka. 
now we get uh, the records and we just iteratively go through the records and do some side effect. And once we finish processing it, we can commit uh, the messages or the records. Now Kafka does have auto commit feature, but you can on very edge cases, maybe lose a, a message uh, if you didn't finish processing it successfully. So it's best to actually explicitly uh, commit the message once you're done handling it. Okay, so a lot of things are going on here. If we take a look at the Grayon API, so this is the Zio flavor. You just specify uh, a record handler and the dependencies that are needed for the handler logic are found in the environment type here. So we need the console to write to the console in the handler. And the error type is nothing, meaning that this handler code cannot fail, which is good. And the key and value type, similarly to how it is done in the Kafka SDK. So you just specify a Lambda and uh, here it's of course uh, written in a IO effect style but there is also the, the future flavor, like I said. And uh, then you just specify the handler as part of the consumer builder with topic and group, and that's it. You don't need to specify any Wix broker locations or uh, other Greyhound consumer stuff like uh, Kafka properties. All of that is have good defaults in place for everyone. And you also don't need to specify commit because Greyhound will, after processing this Lambda, will commit the message for you. Okay, seems uh, straightforward enough. Now I want to switch uh, sides and look at how we utilized functional design to help us better, better design of Greyhound. So we have the composable record handler. What do I mean by that? So the user in the service provides the user handler code and we compose it along with other concerns that uh, Greyhound has for record handling and just compose one single record handler functionally. And that will be invoked by the Greyhound consumer itself. So here we can see a list of functions that the record handler has it actually allow for this composability. For instance, if you want to have some error handling logic, we can add it here to the record handler. So this is part of the core library that the APIs above use. And for instance, there's also the contra map functions. Contra map is similar to how a map, you map the outputs to something else. With contra map, you map the inputs. So this is useful for the with the serializers function that let's say we want to invoke the serializer. So we'll take the type of value and we'll actually change it and serialize it to an array of bytes and then invoke, and then the other parts of the ground consumer can actually work with this handler when it uses array of bytes because that's the generic level and what is actually returned from uh, the Kafka SDK. So this uh, semantic really makes it easier to compose like Le Lego bricks, all of the functionality of the record handler. And you'll see uh, another powerful example of how functional composition helps with the Greyhound implementation a little bit, a little bit later. So, now we are drilling down into the Kafka consumer itself, the Greyhound consumer, sorry. So we have an event loop that will actually pull messages from Kafka and it will then provide these messages to a message dispatcher, which will submit each message to the appropriate worker. And the worker will actually invoke the user handler code now, if you look at the event loop code itself, we can see that we are provided with the handler code and we invoke the handle. And then we um, create the dispatcher. 
and the dispatcher will be able to submit messages through the dispatcher will be able to submit messages to our workers. And this will happen uh, inside our poll function that will poll and actually invoke the workers. And we actually use a Z operator here called repeat while that makes it uh, makes certain that we are uh, stack safe for our recursion, that it won't get to a situation of stack overflow. And we fork it to run on a different fiber. So fiber is what Zio uses for uh, concurrency. And you can think about it as very lightweight threads. Now, notice that when we actually uh, create the handler function here, we actually have an additional functional composition here. After the message is handled, we actually then invoke another functionality to when we manage the offsets. So here we will increment the offset that can be then committed to Kafka. So you can notice here that in the polling logic of the event loop, we commit the offsets after they are handled. And here, when we actually uh, use the handler that we received from the user, we actually compose additional behavior to it. And it's done right here at the same place uh, where we commit the offsets, we also increment them. In the old Greyhound implementation, this was not possible because we didn't use functional composition. So we actually needed to take the offsets and bring them all the way down to the worker class that actually performed message processing and it incremented the offsets. So it's a really nice feature of functional design of local reasoning that you can really see what's going on with offsets management in exactly one place. Cool, so let's get back to features that Greyhound offers. A very important feature is of course, parallel consumption. So if you take a look back at the Kafka SDK consumer, we see that we pulled messages from the consumer, but we can't actually do that in a concurrent way because polling can only be operated from a single thread, meaning that if we wanted to do some multi-threading here, we needed to do this ourselves, submit to like some thread pool and uh, process messages. And uh, we'll need to do that according to the partition. It's quite complex logic. Or alternatively, we can set up multiple Kafka consumers to run at the same time for the same topic and group. But in this case, it will mean we use a lot more resources than we actually need because these Kafka consumers take up resources. So with the Greyhound consumers, we actually utilize the Zeo fibers I mentioned yesterday, uh, earlier, that are like lightweight threads. They are very cheap and also very cheap uh, context switching for them. They take up a lot less memory. So we can actually run as many fibers as we have partitions assigned for this specific instance. So the grand consumer pulls the messages and will produce them through the dispatcher and to the worker for the appropriate ZO queue. It will push the message, submit the message to the queue and processing from this queue will be done sequentially on a, each queue on its own fiber, each partition on its own fiber. So it's a very efficient design and it gives much better performance. We noticed a great deal of improvement in throughput at Wix services when we switched from the old multi-threaded environment of the old Greyhound to the new fiber-based Greyhound. So like I mentioned here, the message will be dispatched to the worker and handled on each fiber. Each worker will run the logic on its own fiber. Great, so that's very important for performance at Wix. What about error handling? We have a very big, I mentioned 1500 microservices. It's a distributed system. A lot of things can go wrong with the, the logic of the services. It's really important to have fault tolerance. So Greyhound offers really easy retry policies to configure. You just specify here in this example, it's a non-blocking retry policy. 
where the user specifies that it wants to redraft a one second interval. And if that doesn't work, then after 10 minutes again, and it just provided to the Greyhound consumer builder, the retry configuration. So how does it work behind the scenes? We have our Greyhound consumer and it has a built-in retry producer that will actually, in case of failure, produce the message to the retry topic. We have a retry topic per interval that the user has declared. And the message will be processed on the retry topic after the interval expires. And of course, if the message fails processing on the first retry, it will then be produced to the second retry topic. And this design of retry topics was inspired by Uber for Greyhound. And notice that there could be a lot of retry topics created automatically on your Kafka cluster because users will uh, set up many intervals. So it's important to make sure that you don't have too many partitions on these retry topics to not get metadata overload for the Kafka cluster and start it behaving less optimally. So our default is just one partition per retry topic because it, it doesn't really uh, ha have a high throughput usually. Now, we also have a blocking retry policy because of course, when you produce the message to the retry topic, you then commit it on the original topic, and then you can process new messages on the original topic and maybe even successfully process them, meaning you will get out of order processing. So if you need to make sure that you have ordered processing, for instance, when a topic uh, that uh, control, you have updates events from source control and you want them processed one by one in order. So Greyhound offers a blocking retry policy that will just retry the same message again and again upon failure of processing. So here we see uh, the very simple configuration. You just specify, for example, that you want to have finite blocking of one second. And if that doesn't work, then after one minute to retry. And there are also other flavors. You have exponentially increasing intervals for blocking retries or infinite blocking if you wanna make sure that this message will eventually get consumed successfully. And all of this is powered by Zeo scheduling that uh, easily, it can, you can easily schedule all kinds of things with Zeo. And uh, of course, when you're blocking this message, it means that there could be a lag developed with the producer, the producer keeps producing messages and you're stuck in this partition on the same message. So a lag can build up. And for that, we actually created an automatic dashboard for each service where the developers can actually go check the message that is currently blocked and then decide if it's not a very interesting message, they can decide to unblock it. Or if they notice that there is a bug they can go fix the bug, deploy the service. And because during the retry process, we don't commit the message until successful consuming, then a message is not committed. Then after deployment, the partitions will get assigned again to any instance. And then hopefully, because the bug is fixed, the message will be processed successfully and the lag will start to go away. Great, so we talked about fault tolerance for the consumer side, but what if errors happen on the producer side? For instance, when for some reason a Kafka broker becomes unavailable, and that can happen even if you have a high availability cluster. So let's think about examples where we can afford having multiple retries for producing. Well, something like offline jobs where the user is not waiting for immediate result on the browser. So for instance, Wix payment service needs sometimes to renew subscriptions. So it gets the request from a job scheduler and then it will produce the subscription renewal message to a Kafka broker. And then the consumer will process the message, try to renew and will retry upon error like the, uh, retry policies that I described earlier. 
But what if the producer failed to produce the message to Kafka broker because of some unavailability issue or network issue? So in this case, Greyhound has the resilient producer. It will first save the messages to disk and only then fetch them and try to send them over to Kafka. So if there is some potential uh, downtime for Kafka brokers, some network issue, then it will retry un until the broker comes back online or the network uh, issue is fixed. And of course, we are now living with Kubernetes deployments. Um, they are very popular. So the service is actually detached from the disk. So if the, if the pod goes down, but messages have, are still accumulated in disk, then we have a dedicated Kubernetes uh, daemon that will actually notice that the pod is down and it will take on the responsibility of producing the messages to Kafka by itself. So we make sure that no message is ever lost. Cool. An additional um, feature, and it's the last one I want to go in depth on uh, in this talk, is context propagation, which is very important for us at Wix. So consider uh, a flow where the user visits a site Wix, a customer site visits a, a Wix site, and wants to sign up, be a member of that site. So we have a set name or service that will get the request to sign up. Now, there is a lot of important information on the HTTP request, uh, the user request context. What language is the user using? What geography? What's the user type? So we can have cookies in place to say, oh, this is a Wix user, a site owner, or this is a site visitor, and all kinds of other important information that will be sent as part of the HTTP request. But then we have a microservices environment where we want to propagate this user request context through uh, Kafka events as well. So Greyhound will produce this context automatically to the Kafka as part of the record headers. And then downstream services like the context service can consume uh, the message and ground consumer will automatically have the context available for context service to actually read and decide what, what they, they need to do with it. Maybe they, uh, just write it to database as part of the new contact that is uh, for this uh, site owner. So here we see uh, how easy it is to actually retrieve the context. Uh, Grayhound actually retrieves the context from the headers. So this is Greyhound code. And it actually will provide the context in inject the context into the handler logic, the user handler logic through the Zio environment dependencies. So the user of Greyhound will then uh, define this method, uh, the record handling uh, logic. So it knows that it has in its available the context of the uh, of the uh, record that Greyhound automatically populates, and it can also access the database. If this is the context service, it has access to the database. So this is, of course, a Zio flavor record handler, and we see here that we get a record handler with environment of database and record handler user context. So we can retrieve the context and write it to the database. So it's really simple and straightforward dependency injection. And it's quite uh, powerful, I should think. And Greyhound also offers uh, the ability to pause or resume consuming when some when your application maybe is, becomes unhealthy, maybe the database is offline, then you want to pause consuming and not get uh, to a bottleneck and failures. And also uh, Greyhound offers a lot of matrix that it reports that are very important for us. We have automatic dashboards in Grafana that uh, report on lags, report on message sizes, on any, any important, on, uh, also on handling time. A lot of important information 
that is really essential when you try to debug an event-driven distributed system. And we also want to introduce to open source Greyhound our batch consumer. We want to introduce uh, the ability to have uh, to employ transactions exactly once processing in the Kafka pipeline in Greyhound as well, and other consumer strategies that are more more helpful for certain use cases. And all of this will be really much simpler to be implemented uh, with Zio because of the powerful concurrency uh, primitives that it offers. So like I mentioned, Greyhound um, is quite robust and really over the years has really battle tested for a ton of services at Wix. And uh, there are a lot of use cases at Wix that use Greyhound in, in various ways. There's the classic PubSub events, but also CDC. So Greyhound is used in order to populate Kafka with uh, events emanating from database bin logs in order to have a, a more continuous event-driven flow. And also offline scheduled jobs, like I mentioned, because you can use the resiliency that Kafka offers for offline jobs. And also Greyhound is used for database replication between uh, different elastic search clusters in different data centers, for instance, and also action retries. Like I said, if you need, if you have a flow that requires retry, then Greyhound can help you a lot with that. And also materialized views. So if you want to actually take some CRUD database and uh, make it or event sourcing database and make all kinds of different views, tables, or have the information optimized for queries in different kinds of databases from the original database source of truth. Doing it with, with Greyhound and Kafka makes a lot of sense. So rewriting Greyhound in Zio resulted in code that it has much less boilerplate. Also the API is a bit cleaner. The code the implementation is easier to follow and understand uh, as long as you know the basic building blocks of Zio and IO and uh, effect IOs. And uh, it's really fun. It was really fun to implement, really fun to, to use Zio to do this like this. And it, we are able to introduce new features faster because of the powerful concurrency and error semantics that Zio offers. So this is the link to actually uh, go and see and check out Greyhound uh, in our public repo and uh, at Wix uh, organization. And uh, like I said, it supports uh, both Scala feature and functional style APIs. And we're currently at uh, version 0 0.1.5. We're starting to see early adopt, adopt, adoption from the community and we also got external contributions already. So we're very excited about that. And um, I would like to thank you very much. And also I put all the slides here on SlideShare. So you can check out uh, this uh, link uh, in SlideShare to, to get all the slides. And you can also follow me on Medium where uh, I put uh, blog posts, I write blog posts on event-driven design, and Kafka related posts, Zia related posts, and all general software engineering uh, related uh, articles. And you can also follow me on Twitter to get the latest on Greyhound and all the other services and um, libraries that we work on at the data streams team at Wix. And you can also check out my website at nathansil.com where you can find previous uh, conferences, talks I gave in previous conferences. So thanks again.